Mr. Giselle Dussi, thank you for making time for Business and Politics. Good evening, yeah. sir. Yeah, thank you. It's an honor to be invited here to your <laughs> very uh, fabulous show, Business and Politics. Well, sir, I, 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 I was excited to talk to you because you you have a very interesting success story. Yeah. I, I understand you came from very humble beginnings. Yeah. Uh, you were a sports enthusiast yeah. who got into somehow the beauty business. Yeah. Uh, but I, I understand your your grandfather was a big influence in your life. Maybe can you can you talk about that? And how yeah. you started? How how he inspired you? What 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 he taught you to uh, uh, be the successful man you are today? Actually, my grandfather is a pioneer in the cosmetic industry in the Philippines. He migrated as a refugee to Philippines in 1938 from China. There, from China, there was civil war. So he came in, uh, at that time, he got nothing. Mm -hmm. So then, then the onset of the war, World War II, and uh, he was living in the Divisoria area bes beside the river. The good thing was, uh, okay, he PR. Okay. And the ground floor was a Japanese headquarter, oh. and his home is on the second floor. I see. And then what he did was he keep on cooking and give the, the mga, mga Japanese commander some food. That's how he survived. That's how he survived. And, and the Japanese uh, soldiers uh, or military uh, gave him a go signal, continue to do your business, is cooking pomade mm. at that time. And then uh, I remember my uncle, my grandfather said, good business, because at that time, Pisong Capital can sell 10 pesos mm. because there's no competition and right. it's protected. Right. And uh, the, the story was he was cooking some some pomade and then he delivered to Quiapo using his bicycle. Lang. Wow. So, now, do, do, do I remember correctly, you, you worked for your grandfather or you you were exposed to the business somehow? Or? Uh, my grandfather was well off okay. when I was growing up. Unfortunately, he was already successful. Though. Yeah, he was very successful, uh, but he passed away at the age of 58 in 90s, at 1969. Uh, I was 11 years old, and there was no succession. Okay. So my uncle was only 19, 20, out of high school. Okay. So obviously there was no no tutorial right. help from my grandfather. And I worked for that company for four years before it closed down in 1980. I see. So that's that's how uh, I started. And it was really a humble beginning because when it shut down, I have to be on my own. So okay. No, I, I heard you were an aspiring athlete. You played for your high school. High school. Team. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was a career you were very interested in. Yeah. But you had to give that up, not to Yeah, correct. To uh, you're good in researching. Huh? <laughs> because uh, I, I played for my high school team, and then I was dreaming to be a PBA player. And uh, I was thinking of, I have to go to college or university muna. But unfortunately, my, circum my environment or circumstances doesn't allow. So I have to work in the daytime and be a working student at night. Wow. So I have to give up that uh, dream and uh, just do some pickup games on the weekends with some friends and the other colleagues. Okay. So now, I, I I was also interested that it, you know in the fact that you had some very well known mentors when you were growing up. Uh, you were close to. Mr. John Gokung Wei when he was alive and Mr. Henry C yeah. when he was alive. How, how did that friendship come about? And then uh, why did they take an interest in you? Well, uh, uh, my, uh, I got to know Henry C in 1980 or 79. Okay. When uh, I was shopping for some gift. Okay. Then I met him with my friend's sister there. Okay. So then we met up with a very small uh, uh, chit chat in the cafe LSC at the time. Okay. And uh, it was I remember it was almost five o'clock. I said, "What are okay. you guys doing?" I said, okay. "We're not doing anything." <laughs> oh, he come to my office in uh, the old stock exchange Just out building. Out of, out of that, out of the, the old blue. one. Yeah. Wow. So we went there. Okay. We went to his office. So I got two. Hours. Did you know who he was? When? I didn't know who he was already. Okay. Because at that time, Shumart Department Store is already right, a name yeah. already. Yeah. They have uh, Shumart in Makati and in Cubao already, okay. plus the one in Quiapo. Okay. So he's quite well known, but not like the Taipan that we used to. That we I, know. Are you related? Because you have. 
<laughs> we we came from the same area, Jinjiang in Fujian. So okay. all same the seeds are coming from the same village. Ah. So the good thing was I met Mr. Henry C. in 1980 and I met uh, Mr. John in 1985-86. Uh, both of them gave me their, shared me their wisdom. And uh, I realized that I was ahead of my my friends who are same in the early 20s. I felt that I was ahead by 30 years. I was in the 50s already, which is their age, right. because they share me their his wisdom and experiences. At the time, I, I you you were already in business, or you were just getting started, or with Henry C. I was about to get started. Okay. While with Mr. John, I was already in the business. I see. I so see. both contributed a lot to my uh, knowledge and. Short of shortcutting the 30 years uh, work from my 20s to my 50s, right. so I was ahead of all my peers, and uh, I pick up everything what they what he, they shared me. I put it in my brains. I put it into work. So yeah. that's suerte lang talaga, very suerte. Would uh, if, would you mind telling us, you know, for, with, with Mr. Henry C. first? What no, were, what are some of the things you remember about him, and what 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 would you consider his most maybe important advice to you as a young person you know you you were still getting started uh, yeah with uh, mr henry c uh he told me you know what we have in common between myself mr john sorianos the sobels and all the other big guys so what we never finish our college <laughs> okay i am so tamad in studying so because <laughs> you gave me a good reason to quit school okay he said okay but if you don't finish school, your college, you're on your own, you have to work your ass out. Okay, okay. And he said, very clear, said, you have to go over the hump. Okay. That's maybe three, five years. Okay. Once you go over the hump, you roll down, it's very easy. Okay. So I said, I was, that time I was 20, 21, I said, I give myself five years. Okay. Following Mr. Henry's uh, suggestion. Yeah. So after five years, if I don't make it, I'm 25, 26, I can still go back to school. Yeah. So that was my you idea. You were still young enough. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, true enough, 1983, 84, I started Eber Belena. Okay. And then, 85, 86, I met Mr. Janaman. So, both have the same philosophy, same wisdom that shared yeah. to me. Yeah. So, when I met Mr. Jai, I was already in business, yeah. and he gave me some breaks also. Yeah. So, I still started rolling down. So, I didn't go back to school anymore. I yeah. continued doing the business now. Right. Now, I, I remember in one of the interviews you did, you were saying that you would often go to the house of Mr. Jan. Jo Hong Wei, yeah. and you would just have like a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And Correct, yeah. I mean, what would you guys talk about? I mean, what are some of the things that, that, that stick out in your mind? Huh? Well, uh, every Sunday, he's just in his uh, North Forbes home. Yes. He said, uh, he come visit me. So I went yeah. visit him. Yeah. I go there maybe 3.30 to 4. He said he always take a nap. Okay. So yes, when I reached there, he is already awake. Yeah. He's laying down beside his pool. Yeah. So we talked for two, three hours up to 6.30 in the evening. And he said, I like you, huh? you, you, our brain waves can, you know, nagkakatagbo. Right. I, mean, I don't talk with young guys, but with you, I, I can talk with you for many hours. Because yun pala, he was trying to see who are, what's happening down there. Okay. Because he is up there and I'm down there. Then yeah. he, kamusta na si gano, kamusta right. na So right. I shared with him what's happening on uh, Ground Zero. Right. And on my side, oh, what's happening up there naman? Right. So right. he will explain, this is like this, like yeah. that. So it, open my mind that what we read and what we do is different from what they're doing on top. Okay. So, okay. suerte, nag a right. tayo. So, yeah. before you reach the top, you have to do this, do that. So, like, sabi niya, sa umpisa, you can afford not to pay taxes. But okay. when you're starting to grow big, you have to pay taxes. So, that's okay. always in my mind. So, why? Okay. Because you don't pay tax, you cannot grow big. The okay. BI will also run you. after you, we get yeah. you. So, Sabiko, when do you say, you will know when at the right time. Right. So once I feel, when I was growing up, the bis, growing the business, so pag may mga BR na, the problem come in, then I, re, I remember what he's saying. Okay. So you pay the right taxes, so right. then you can grow the business more. Right. So, uh, what other business lessons did, did you learn from them that maybe that you think as important enough to pass on to 
like the next generation. Uh, both of them have the same philosophy. Walang chamba chamba sa okay. business. You have to work hard. You have to work hard. Talaga. And you have to know the timing, you have to be patient. Okay. Uh, the chamba is a result of your hard work. Okay. And you should have good timing. If you see opportunity, you have to grab it. Okay. Uh, actually, I remember now, uh, I went to the office of Henry C. There's an eagle like that. Okay. Naka, naka, no, naka preserve with yes. a spotlight. Ah, okay. Then I asked him, oh, uh, Mr. C, why do you have that eagle? Okay. So I like eagle because eagle, they soar in the sky and when they see the opportunity, which is the, let's say some rabbits or something, they dive, they catch a freight and they go up again. So that means if there's opportunity, you have to grab it before you lose it. So you grab it, you bring up, then you look at it. So if you're up there, you can see everything. Kasi. So that stick in my mind. Mm, interesting. And so, then the credibility, sabi niya, you can lose money, but you don't lose your credibility. The credibility is very important, more important than money that you will lose or you will earn. Sabi niya, when you issue a check, make sure your check will be good. And if you cannot be good, maski a week or so before the due date, you have to call and say sorry, you have to extend a little bit, then people will understand. Rather than letting your check bounce, then you lose your credibility. Interesting. So perspective, decisiveness, yeah. and credibility, yes. important lessons. Yes. We'll be uh, right back with Giselle to see this is business and politics. We'll take a quick break.